Am I the a-hole stories? Am I the a-hole for telling my sister with cancer that bad things happen to bad people? Me, 27 male, and my sister, Ava 31, have never gotten along for a number of reasons. 1. I was adopted at age 8 and she still only addresses our parents as her parents and she calls me a family friend not her brother, when introducing me to people. 2. I was overweight for most of my childhood and she used to bully me over it a lot. 3. I have a stereotypically girl name, I was named after my birth mom. For the sake of this post, think Kelly or Anna. Something boring and basic but unmistakably girly, and she continues to this day to bully me over it. 4. She outed me as gay to our entire high school in the school paper. 5. She says I ruined her life because I encouraged her parents to foster our other two siblings. 6. She once locked me out of our house for three days while my parents were out of town. I was 13 and had to stay at the neighbor's house because she wouldn't open the door even when my parents called and told her to. There are many more examples for her being awful, but these ones came to mind first. Last week, Ava called me, my siblings, and my parents, and asked us to come over for lunch. Me and my siblings had to stop and pick up food on the way over to her house, she won't cook for us, only for our parents, so we drove together. When we got there, our parents were already there in the kitchen crying. I asked what happened and Ava told us that she had cancer and she wanted our support. I said I'm sorry about that. Because I really didn't know what else to say. Ava and my parents got upset and we all basically got into a screaming match. I told her that she really shouldn't be surprised that karma finally found her. Ava asked what I meant, and I told her that bad things happen to bad people. She started sobbing and I walked right out the front door. My parents have been calling me to say that I was an a-hole, and my siblings are mad that I drove away without them, but they agree that Ava's awful. I'm starting to feel kind of bad because I know how horrible cancer is, and I know that no one deserves to go through that. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Everyone sucks here. Your sister sucks for the horrible way she has treated you for years. Your parents suck for not stopping her behavior. And you suck for thinking that cancer is a punishment that bad people get. I lost a very good friend to cancer almost two years ago. She was a lovely woman and did nothing to deserve cancer. I imagine most people who have cancer have not done anything that would warrant that horrible disease. She was a lovely woman and did nothing to deserve cancer I imagine most people who have cancer have not done anything that would warrant that horrible disease. Sadly this is true, the good ones go first and then the bad ones seem to live forever. I mean, the real truth is that cancer, just doesn't give a damn if you are good or bad. Everyone sucks here, so her for obvious reason, but you for implying that cancer hits only bad people. Also, bad things happen to everyone, not just bad people. Yeah, everyone sucks here. I sympathize with you greatly, she sounds awful, but it's the kind of thing you keep to yourself at that time, and go no contact with her instead. I agree that everyone sucks here, however I disagree with keeping quiet. Ava was asking unequivocal support knowingly mistreating the adoptive siblings while the parents enabled her bad behavior for years. Ava is going through a terrible illness but she not once ever expressed remorse or feelings of repentance. OP finally had a platform to raise his issue since the parents have done nothing to intervene and it appears the younger siblings, who may still be living at home, is taking the brunt of it. Let's not forget Ava went out of her way to lock OP out of the house when he was a minor honestly CPS should have been called. Punishment should have been exacted in order to curb the type of tomfoolery. OP expressed condolences at first, but the family pushed for an explanation to the lack of sympathy. Was OP supposed to lie? Because look what good that did when OP said. I'm sorry about that. Ava and the parents are finally faced with the truth that people will not feel sympathy after years of abuse. The parents saw the abuse and how it affected OP, yet they were stoic and unresponsive, but when OP finally takes a stand, they lose their minds. Like I said, cancer is a terrible illness, but those afflicted are not entitled to any sympathy from those that they hurt. OP gave his truth and hopefully OP can finally cut contact with Ava and move on with his life. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for moving out cause my family keeps playing with my cane? So I, 17 female, still live with my mom, my stepdad, and my two half-siblings, 5 male and 7 female. My dad died when I was 5 driving me to the hospital, mom didn't want to pay for an ambulance. He died in the crash and my leg and spine got busted up in a way that has left me needing a cane pretty much ever since. My stepdad's always been a little distant with me, he likes to make jokes about how I'm an early blooming black widow. 
I think he gets that from my mom, who blames me for my dad's death. I do too, it is my fault after all, so I don't push back on it. Anyway, the point is that, with the current situation, my parents are always looking for ways to get my half-siblings active and doing things without leaving the house, and have recently settled on scavenger hunts. I have no problem with this honestly. I wish they'd stop hiding stuff in my underwear drawer, but it's a 5-year-old and a 7-year-old, so that's not the worst. My problem though is that they keep taking my cane when I'm not looking, I tend to get lost in my homework and my writing hobby and zone out, and having it be one of the items that my half-siblings have to find. When I complain to my stepdad, he's a stay-at-home dad, so is usually the one running these things, he scolds me for being selfish, and points out that my swivel chair has wheels if I need the bathroom, and that they always get it to me before I have to go downstairs for dinner. I tried my mom yesterday, and she said that I was being a brat and that if I wanted a father who cared about me, I shouldn't have killed my dad. I got really upset at that point and called my grandparents, my mom's parents, dads are dead too. They showed up at 10 p.m. yesterday, and grandma screamed at them while grandpa packed my stuff up and helped me out to their car. My mom's been blowing up my phone and email, calling me all sorts of names and accusing me of turning her family against her and trying to get her in legal trouble since minors can't move out. And I can't help but think that maybe she's right. So, am I the a-hole? Oh honey no. You didn't kill your dad. It isn't your fault. Accidents are accidents because they aren't your fault. Your mother is unbelievably awful for the way she has been treating you and allowing you to be treated. Please stay with your grandparents. And if you have access, maybe seek out a therapist to help you work through all this guilt you're holding on to. More than anything, I send you hugs. Oh and, not the a-hole. In any way shape or form. Do not go back to that abusive house. I caused him to need to be in the car though. I wasn't sick, I'd injured myself jumping off the stairs because I thought my supergirl costume would make me fly. I didn't cause the accident itself, but it's my fault he was in the accident. I appreciate the hugs and the verdict though. By this same logic, it should be your mom's fault if she didn't want to pay for an ambulance. Jesus. Not the a-hole all the way and tons of hugs for you. Please take care of yourself and don't go back there. Not the a-hole. Your mother is straight up abusive. Your father's death is not your fault and she is frankly completely awful for allowing and reinforcing those beliefs. Your stepdad is an a-hole too for taking a necessary aid from you. If he wore glasses, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't find it funny if you kept hiding them. These people are toxic and cutting them out of your life may well be your best decision here. Not the a-hole. First of all, your father's death was absolutely not your fault. Your mother has behaved absolutely abhorrently towards you, and it's downright horrific that anyone in your household thinks it's okay to take a cane and leave you without means to get around your home easily. Everyone in your household, except you, has behaved terribly. Good on you for getting out. Please also talk to your grandparents about getting you into therapy. You certainly have a lot of things to talk through and I think you would find it very helpful. I mean, like I've said elsewhere, it was my fault, but I appreciate your kindness regardless. Therapy might be a good idea though, yeah. I'm reluctant to ask for anything, since I take so much, but. Not a bad idea. Next story is titled. Am I the a-hole for telling my wife I would open a separate account if she didn't get her money back? I, 39 male, have been married to my wife, 36 female, for 12 years. We have no children, but we do have a cat and a dog who we consider to be our children. My wife has a sister M. 37 female, who has made very poor financial choices and is now heavily in debt. She refuses to get a job, and instead jumps, from on MLM or a get-rich-quick scam to the next, sponging off of relatives to make ends meet. Both me and my wife work full-time. We each have separate accounts that we use for our fun money for hobbies or whatever we want. We earn almost the same amount of money, with me being a little higher, so I contribute 60% and she contributes 40% to make things fair and also so we each have about the same amount of fun money. We also have a joint checking and savings account that we use for the household bills and household emergency fund, like when the water heater flooded the basement in the middle of the night. Both of us have access to the joint accounts, and if we need to use it, it is never an issue, so long as we make sure to tell the other that we used funds from those accounts. As I was going through the statements for our joint household account, I noticed that there was approximately $2,000 missing from the joint savings account. I noticed that they were all Venmo transfers to her sister. When my wife came home from work, I asked what this was about, and she told me that her sister needed money to start her own business. 
my wife sat me down and explained to me that her sister joined yet another freaking pyramid scheme, this time selling fake nails and makeup. My wife said that she has the potential to earn six figures a month if that was true. My wife also said that she too was going to join her sister selling these products, and if she made enough, would quit her job and sell them full time with her sister. I told my wife that she either needs to get that money back from her sister or I would open a new account for my share of the household expenses and transfer it to that account when it was time to pay bills. My wife is upset with me and does not understand why I'm being so unsupportive. I told my wife that not only did she take money and not tell me about it, she invested it into something without even considering how I would feel about it. My sister-in-law called me last night and said that I was a raging a-hole and a control freak, and that I was stopping my wife from using her full potential. I told my sister-in-law that I would support my wife in anything she chooses to do, as long as it would not cause financial harm to our family. My wife and sister-in-law are both pissed at me, and now I feel like an A. Am I the a-hole for telling my wife to get the money back? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. You don't secretly take money from a joint account. You ask has it's family money. I'd separate accounts. Your wife is intent on joining a pyramid scheme and will end up losing thousands. Statistically, this is the most likely outcome of pyramid scheme slash MLMs. Protect your assets before that happens. Edit. I would also make it clear to your wife that any money spent on her hair brain pyramid scheme needs to come out of her fund money, not the household bills money. I would also make it clear to your wife that any money spent on her hair brain pyramid scheme needs to come out of her fund money. Exactly this. That money should never have come from the joint account. Her decision and her money? Fine. Taking joint money for it? Not a chance. OP, you are not the a-hole. That's the part that baffled me the most and is why OP should definitely open a new account. They have their own fun money, but yet she decides to not use that money, and instead transfer a large sum of money from the shared account without any communication? That screams financially irresponsible to me, I would be scared sharing an account with her. Not the a-hole. Had she spent her own fun money, that would be one thing. She can do whatever she wants with that. She can either get that money back from her sister or use her discretionary income to top up the account, but she cannot make unilateral decisions about family funds without your approval. Unless she's cool with you literally setting $2,000 on fire in front of her because you felt like it. But why spend her own money when she can just use the shared money? Don't you know it's an emergency? Don't you know that she can't just lose her money, what are you thinking? Not the a-hole, your wife is ridiculously gullible. Yes she is, but I also want to add the caveat that these MLM companies train people to manipulate and pressure the people in their lives using their existing interpersonal relationships. It's definitely gullible for OP's wife to fall for this scam, and believe she will make six figures a month doing it, but her sister, presumably someone she loves and trusts, is actively weaponizing their close relationship to manipulate her into joining, and is doing it with scripts and psychological tricks the company is directly providing her with. The wife doesn't want to join because she heard a business proposition she thought was convincing and compelling, she wants to join for emotional reasons tied into guilt, obligation and love that the sister is actively milking. MLMs are really very very cult-like, and their reliance on the exploitation of existing social bonds, is one reason they persist, despite 5 minutes of Google research making it abundantly clear to any thinking person, that they're a horrible idea. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for laughing at my sister's apology? I know the title would indicate I am the a-hole, but hear me out. 11 years ago, my sister was engaged to her now husband, I had a fallout with him because of a business that didn't take off. She took his side and was pretty annoyed with me. So around a month of that situation, I was sleeping in my other sister's room one afternoon. She came to the room and took a bath, she took her engagement ring off her finger and left it in that room, well that is what she told everyone. After she came out the bathroom, a scream woke me up. She was hysterical because her ring had disappeared and she went like crazy telling someone had stolen it, and the obvious thief was me. She told everyone that I stole the ring because I was mad with her because what happened with her fiancé, and searched me to see if I had the ring. She told everyone that I was a thief and everyone believed her, my other sister took her side and went to comfort her, so did everyone else. They ostracized me because I was a thief, and always suspected I did it for revenge against her and her fiancé. After that, it took like a year to somewhat clear my name, because at her wedding, my cousin told everyone she had the same ring that I stole. I was not invited to her wedding, neither I had any kind of relationship with her. 
Two years later, I almost broke my back and she never cared about what happened to me. Then in 2016, one of her kids fell into a serious illness that almost took his life, everyone was pressuring me to go to the hospital to comfort her. I didn't go, and hell, I didn't even care. I had to go to individual counseling to try to get over this. I have a relationship with my other members of my family, but I don't trust them, and I don't open up to them because they don't deserve it. Since then, I have gone almost no contact with her, her husband, and kids. The few times I talk to them is only to say hello, and that's it. Last Sunday, she wanted to talk to me, because she wants his brother back, and wants me to have a relationship with her and my nephews. She told me that she is sorry for everything she did, and she was crying as she was saying it. After I heard her say that, instead of berating her, I went full joker laugh mode, and left there. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole, but I'd tell her that actions speak a lot louder than words. Tell her that the only way you will consider accepting her apology is if she comes clean all the way, tells every single person exactly how she lied and how long she kept it up, and that she is entirely responsible for the rift in the family, not you. Then, consider it. And probably still say no. I would. Not the a-hole. She robbed you of your family, love, and trust. She messed up big time and it's totally fine not to let her back in. Info. So what happened with the ring? I think I missed that. She had it on her finger at her wedding, my cousin told me she told him she found it and never apologized for framing me for theft. And now 11 years later, apologized last Sunday crying, and I went full joker laugh and left there. All my family are mad and telling me I'm an a-hole. What exactly did her husband do, if you don't mind me asking? He was mad because that he wanted for us to work on a project, doing it basically for free, and after it was done pay me with utilities and not a salary. So me and my other partner said no, we wanted a salary because if we worked as employees, we needed to be paid. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.